Moving on to the updates coming from the Israel-Hamas conflict. The war between Israel and the militant group Hamas has been going on for more than three weeks now. And the war seems to be deepening between the two sides as Israel continues with its attack on the militant group. Israel carried out a raid on the northern city in the West Bank, leaving four Palestinians dead and scores injured. And this is according to the Palestinian Health Ministry. Moreover, according to reports, Palestinian youths were seen hurling stones at an Israeli bulldozer driving down the street. Now, while the sound of a distant explosion and gunfire could be heard in the distance, paramedics were also seen helping to evacuate families to safe zones. Now, on Sunday, Israel signaled its intent to encircle Gaza's main city and they published pictures of battle tanks on the Palestinian enclave's western coast, 48 hours after ordering expanded ground incursions across its eastern border. Now, Israel's self declared, Israel declared the second phase of a three-week war against Hamas militants. They had initially been kept from public view with forces moving under darkness and a telecommunication blackout cutting off Palestinians. But according to Gaza residents, the phone and internet cuts appeared to be easing on Sunday and the loss of communication had severely hampered rescue operations for casualties of Israeli wreaking destruction, especially on the northern city, which is believed to be the site of Hamas's government and command centers. Now, meanwhile, Hamas has said that its fighters were engaged in heavy fighting in Gaza where Israel had escalated ground operations and has calls multiplied to deliver aid to the Palestinian territory after weeks of siege and bombardment. And as Israel continues to bomb Gaza, according to the health ministry in Hamas-ruled Gaza, over 8,000 Palestinians have been killed since the war broke out on 7th of October. And it is said that the toll has now risen to 8,005 Palestinians, including more than 3,300 minors and over 2,000 women. Now, meanwhile, according to Israeli officials, the fighting has killed more than 1,400 people in Israel and mostly civilians who died in the initial Hamas attack. Now, since the initial attack by Hamas, the escalation has ratcheted up domestic pressure on Israel's government to secure the release of some 230 hostages. So far, only four hostages have been released by the militant group. Adko. מסרנו הודעה למשפחותיהם של 311 חיילי צה״ל ו-239 חטופים. אני רוצה להסביר את המספר הזה. זה מספר לא נתפס, 239 חטופים. בקרב החטופים יש אזרחים עובדים זרים, מספר לא קטן שלהם, שזהותם והגעה למשפחות שלהם מורכבת עבורנו. לוקח לנו זמן לבנות את התמונה הזאת. ומכאן גם המספר שציינתי, 239. אנחנו ממשיכים במאמצים כבירים לאסוף מידע ולעדכן את המשפחות כל הזמן. מספר הנעדרים ממשיך לרדת ועומד כעת על 40. World leaders have underlined the urgency of increasing aid into the Hamas control territory. UN chief Antonio Guterres has said that the situation was growing more desperate by the hour. As casualties increase and essential supplies of food, water, medicine and shelter dwindle. According to the Palestinian Red Crescent Society, Israel is repeatedly bombing around Al-Quds Hospital in central Gaza, causing damage and putting civilians at risk. And according to doctors, moving hundreds of Palestinians, moving hundreds of patients who are currently being treated there is not possible, where some 14,000 people are seeking shelter and medical aid. But despite, for a humanitarian, but despite calls for a humanitarian truce, international outreach and the potential risk to hostages held in Gaza still remains. Israel has intensified the war triggered by Hamas's unprecedented attack. While on its northern border clashes along the Lebanon-Israel border between Hezbollah and Israel intensified, leaving at least one Hezbollah militant dead. Lebanon state-run national news agency said that Israeli drone attacks struck the southeastern Lebanese border down, wounding two. It also added that heavy missiles were launched from Lebanon towards northern Israel, after which Israeli forces responded with artillery. Now, while Jordan, that is located on the eastern side of Israel, 
the staunch U.S. ally has asked Washington to deploy Patriot air defense systems to bolster its border defense and at a time of heightened regional tensions and conflict. Interestingly, sources say that the top officials from Iran and Gaza's terror rulers also spoke by telephone at least four times this year. Now, for more on this, uh, we are now joined by international affairs analyst Dr. Gilbert Doctoro from Brussels. Welcome to the broadcast, Dr. Doctoro. It's good to have you back again on the show. Well, thank you for inviting me. Now, I want to begin with the latest that's come in. First of all, it just seems like confusion and desperation is just spiraling further and further as the war goes on for over three weeks now. And the immediate evacuation of Al-Quds Hospital, which is the latest update that's in, Israel wants Gazans to evacuate the hospital. And the staff says that it's not possible as 14,000 people take shelter and while several are in intensive care. What do you have to say about that? The situation is dire. The, the Israel-Hamas war is, has many possible scenarios for further progress, further evolution, and I would not want to uh, wager a bet on any of them because, <clears throat> because it's unforeseeable uh, which way things will go. However, I'd like to emphasize that it is impossible for any country in the world to stay on the sidelines. You mentioned at the start of this news hour the incident at uh, Dagestan's main airport, Mahachkala, in which uh, a, a crowd attempted to storm an airplane arriving from Tel Aviv and to seek out Israeli or, or Jewish passengers on that flight. And this underlines the threat to all countries which have mixed populations, and that is nearly all of Europe, I might add it also is all of India, uh, that the, uh, the hostility the ethnic and religious tensions that this war in Gaza is generating affects everyone. So far, the repercussions have been minor, although the incident in, in uh, Dagestan uh, highlights why uh, President Putin had a meeting with all of the leaders of, ma of the major faiths in, in Russia yesterday, precisely to, to, to uh, make the point that uh, this war threatens the unity of all countries which have mixed populations. The, um, uh, the um, military dimension is, as I say, unforeseeable. So far, sides have been restrained. So far, uh, Hezbollah has not uh, advanced from token attacks on Israel. But it's impossible to say when that will change or what may force it to change. The attacks on American bases in uh, in Syria by um, uh, by um, forces pro-Iranian forces in Iraq uh, are continuing and are escalating. Sure, Just don't... remember that the United States has 5,000 troops in that area, and they are all vulnerable to attack. Sure. Dr. Dr. Roy, I also want to kind of talk to you about the pressure that seems to be building on Israeli government. And this is a slightly longer question, so please bear with me. And the pressure on Israeli government is building for several reasons. First, the intel failure has caused an uproar among Israeli citizens. Second, the hostage situation. And third, the wild, worldwide protests calling for an end to the war. And in fact, the latest writers storm Russia's Dagestan airport ahead of the reported arrival of an Israeli flight. And finally, fourth, now even U.S., which is Israel's biggest ally, uh, President Joe Biden warns Israel of conducting its offensive that, that should be consistent with the humanitarian, humanitarian law. So, I mean, is this going to have any implication, any implication whatsoever on Israel's course of action in this war? So long as there is words and not a mandatory decision coming from, for example, the United Nations uh, Security Council, I don't think these words by themselves are going to change very much. With the dynamics of politics within Israel itself are something else. And there, I think you're very correct in highlighting the, uh, the possible pressures on Netanyahu from, just remember, that Israel went into this conflict with <clears throat> Hamas, a divided nation. A divided nation over the the efforts of the Netanyahu government 
to keep that prime minister in power at all costs uh, and his his formation of a, of a cabinet uh, which for the first time in Israeli history gave great prominence to the far right the religious fanatics uh, who ended his that leaning towards the fanatics which made the attack of Hamas on the 7th of October possible since the Israeli army was busy distracted protecting uh, uh, the settlers in the West Bank uh, from from the uh, provocative actions uh, that, that, that created uh, enormous tensions in the area. Uh, so Mr. Netanyahu was under pressure uh, that pressures that pre-existed this, this uh, Hamas attack and his confidence is called into question by Israelis sure, for good enough. reason. Yes. And as the pressure uh, mounts on the Israeli government, the threat also of this war spilling into a regional war in West Asia looms. But uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Doctoro, for joining us and giving us your time and all those insights. Really appreciate giving your time. Well, thanks. Thanks for having me.